Um, now we uh, have another amazing counselor to welcome to the, the stage who's going to talk to you uh, and address you on the subject of social responsibility, social business. Um, he is uh, Professor Mohammed Yunus. He is an amazing guy. He is a Nobel uh, laureate. Uh, he is somebody who founded the Grameen Bank and actually created microfinance. Um, and is somebody who's been incredibly, incredibly active at, at saying that it is women who can solve so many of the world's problems at a, at a small level and at a macro level. Um, so there's a little film to introduce him and give you a little bit more background to him, and then we'll welcome to the stage Professor Yunus. So if we could run the film, please. We created a joint venture company with Danone. Danone is the food company, which the water company and the yogurt company. You know, Danone yogurt, everybody likes. So this is called Grameen Danone Company in Bangladesh. I met the chairman of Danone in a chance meeting, and we were discussing, and I suggested to him, why don't we create a Grameen Danone Company in Bangladesh? He said, to do what? I said, to produce yogurt. You said, your yogurt is very delicious. <laughs> I said, for a special purpose. We can produce yogurt to address the problem of malnutrition among the children of Bangladesh. We take all the micronutrients which are missing in the children, put it in the yogurt, and make it very cheap so that the poorest children can afford it and eat it. There are millions and millions of children in Bangladesh who are malnourished. Experts tell us that if a child eats two cups of these yogurts per week and does it over a year, he or she will regain their full health. He said, I agree. He shook hands and he said, I agree. I said, I have not finished yet. <laughs> I said, it will be a social business. He said, what is a social business? I explained to him, in this business, social business, you can invest, but you cannot take any dividend. You can take all your investment back, recoup all your money, but after you have taken back the last penny, it stops. Company continues to earn profit, but it is not your profit. It's company's profit. Con company continues to expand and reach out to more children because it is driven by the social objective. He again shook hands, he said, I agree. This time I thought he doesn't understand my English. <laughs> but later on I exchanged emails explaining everything. I said, please confirm if we understand each other. <laughs> he gladly sent me back, he said, I understood every word of it. Let's go ahead and do it. And we created that company. We are selling that yogurt now in Bangladesh. She gets a batch of supplies from the Grameen Danone factory and then she sells it in the village. We have a special program for beggars. So she might be a member of that group that as a beggar she joined Grameen Bank to take a loan and start the, the business. And instead of begging around, now she sells around. So it's a transformation by itself. This particular job, with the selling yogurt, came in very handy. She knows the families all around the place. Uh, she knows where she can sell this stuff. And people support her because she used to beg. Now she is uh, selling something. So this is good for everybody. If this becomes successful in this cluster of villages, then all we have to do is to repeat this all over Bangladesh, because as a once if you put it in a business format, then the sky is the limit. You can expand it as many ways as you want, because it, once you get this engine started, it never stops. It runs by its own steam. And that's where the difference between charity and a social business. In charity, when you give the money, it goes away. It never comes back. So charity dollar has only one life. If you use it, is done. But if you can define this or design this into a social business, then suddenly 
that social business dollar has endless life because it recycles, it starts moving back and forth again and again. So you touch many more lives and it continues ever and ever. So he was amazing uh, on video. He's even more amazing in real life. One of my personal heroes, Professor Yunus. Hi, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, as you could figure out, I'm from Bangladesh. <laughs> and you've been talking a lot about Bangladesh. And it needs to be talked about. We have a lot of problems. One big one, at least we didn't create it. Somebody else did it for us. <laughs> so one quick solution, uh, whatever solution we do, one responsibility as young people, probably <clears throat> you can take that uh, a kind of a uh, pledge that we will hand over this planet safer than we found it. So once we have that pledge, everything else probably fall in place. How we do that? How do we make it safer for our next generation? In our generation, we have failed. Probably we'll hand it over to you, more dangerous planet than we found it. I hope we can reverse it from your generation. Uh, this is just a continuation of what <clears throat> you have been discussing a little while ago. Uh, but uh, my work, uh, one thing that I can uh, tell you right away, <clears throat> my specialty is doing little things rather than big things. Big things are good to have it in mind, but it always overwhelms you. If you see something big that you feel so insignificant in the face of the big things. To bring up the sanity in you, always it helps me to think the smallest possible. Then you feel good, you feel strong. And in terms of the smallest, I always go back to one person because that's one very safe area that you can work with. <clears throat> if you can work with one person, if you have some impact on one person because of your work, then you can multiply if you, can, if you have the opportunity. So this is how all my work began, almost at the level of 1% and 5%, 10%, like that. And gradually, I'm lucky that many of them work, got into bigger, bigger, area and larger, larger numbers. And as you recall, probably those who have uh, read about Grameen Bank, which I created in Bangladesh way back in 1976, started out giving $27 as loans from my own pocket. So I didn't have to ask anybody for anything. <clears throat> I was good enough for $27. And I gave this loan to 42 people. And the impact that made, made me feel that, oh, I can do more. If uh, you, you can make so many people so happy with such a small amount of money, why shouldn't you do more of it? So I was doing more of it. So instead of 27, I would like to do more. Instead of 42, I'd add a few more. And still doing the same thing, trying to get to more and more. And luckily, in the meantime, it all spread everywhere, all around. So this is uh, one idea that uh, to back, get into action is good to start with the minimum possible level, at the minimum possible level. And I, I said I created a bank. I'm not a banker. I never studied banking. I had no idea how banks operate. But I created a bank. <laughs> it's a funny thing. But it's a great thing. It's a great lesson, too. If you don't know anything, 
don't feel ashamed about it. You may have a chance because you can create something on your own. If I knew banking, probably I wouldn't be able to create Grameen Bank because I'll be following the rules. The reason I could do it because I violated all the rules and I didn't feel guilty about it. I didn't know about it. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes not knowing can be a blessing. Knowing creates a mindset in your mind and you cannot get out of it. And those are the rules that you get from the knowing. Those are the concepts that you get from the knowing are the ones who created all these problems for us. So unless we undo those rules, unless we undo those concepts, we cannot get out of this mess. It's a real mess. So that's where your task begins, to undo things rather than doing more of the same. So you have to distinguish whether I'm doing more of the same or I'm undoing something for a good cause. Just for the sake of des destroying it, that's not a cause. You have to have an alternative which works for people. That's why one person, two person, five person is good to try it out. And how do they make up those rules? Just by hunch. But just looking at the situation, oh, this might work, why don't you do it? If it didn't work, I'm not too upset about it because I didn't know anything, so I did again, another way, it worked. In the process, that whole bank was created as if I have done everything the conventional banks do, I have done it at the opposite way. As if deliberately I have done that. They go to the rich, I go to the poor. They go to men, I go to women. They go to city, I go to village. They ask you to come to their office, I say I go to the people. People should not come to the bank, bank should go to the people. So I made it up. And it works, now it works everywhere. The name, the term microcredit, microfinance, everybody knows that. But this is how it started, in one village with few people. So having a small thing is not something that you should be worrying about. If it works, you have developed a seed. Now all you have to do is to multiply. If you have a seed bed and you go into plantation, everywhere, because you have the seed. And that is much more comforting because I can do it, you can do it, anybody can do it. Today, Grameen Bank in Bangladesh has over 8 million borrowers. And 97% of them are women. They're extremely poor women. And they own the bank. I made sure the bank is owned by the borrowers who are the poor people. And we lend out over $100 million a month in tiny loans averaging less than $200. Uh, no collateral, because banks, conventional banks want collateral, that's why they rejected everybody else, these people. So we removed the collateral. It's a trust-based banking. It works beautifully. Repayment rate is 98%, 99%, all over the world. So this is where doing something new, something different, is not to be afraid of. You try it out. If first one doesn't work, try the second one. Second one doesn't work, try the third one. Because it's small, you have not harmed anybody. But if one worked, you may benefit millions and millions and millions. So this is the task probably you'd like to try. And don't give up if something doesn't work or somebody opposes it. So we have this bank, and we go to the poor people, we see how hard they work. Then we give student loans to the children of these families. These are illiterate families. So we want to make sure the children go to school. So we made sure 100% of these children go to school. 
and we succeeded. Now, many thousands and thousands are coming for higher education. But that gets a little expensive. So we give education loans. They go to all the higher educational institutions that you go to. You go to any Bangladeshi education institution, you'll see Grameen children studying there. And they're no different than like you. They're just like the same. So seeing this, you always come back to the same conclusion. Why poverty? Is it in the person? Is it something missing in the person? Or something else? And always you conclude there's nothing wrong with the poor people. Poverty is not created by the poor people. It's created by the institutions that we have built. The rules that I said you made, we follow. That's where created poverty. Concepts that we so carefully study in our schools, they created poverty. If we fix the concepts, if we fix the framework, there's no reason why anybody should be a poor person. They're as good as anybody else. They're packed with capacity. They're packed with enthusiasm. They're packed with hopes. But the, they are all off. Concepts and the framework doesn't allow them to work. I give the reference of, or an image of a bonsai tree. I said you take the seed of a best best seed of the tallest tree and put it in a flower pot. It grows only this big and we love it. It's a tiny little thing. We love it. We call it bonsai. There's nothing wrong with the seed. Simply we didn't give the enough space, enough ground to base on which this seed to grow. The poor people are bonsai people. There's nothing wrong in their seed. Simply, we didn't give them the space, we didn't give them the base to grow. If we had given them, they would be as tall as anybody else, just like us. So I particularly questioned the concept of business. I said, that's where we went wrong. There's only one concept of business. I'm sure everybody knows that. Business means business to make money. You have not heard of any other business. If you are in business, you're making money. And that's what your textbook says. Profit maximization is the mission of the business. The whole world is busy with business, busy with making money. All of us are encouraged to go into business and work for the business, spend our lifetime with the business, and help the owners of the businesses make more money. And I raise the question, are we all kind of money-making machines? Is this what human beings are here for? Make money, make money, and then disappear? In the, in the process, destroy everything else? Because you're so focused in making money, you don't worry about the global warming, you don't worry about who gets poor, you don't worry about what kind of politics you have, because you're so focused on making money. That's not a good thing. I said, that's where we went wrong. Economist misinterpreted us. We are much bigger than money-making machine. Money-making is a part of us, but not the whole of us, only part of us. What about the rest of us, rest of the part of us? So money-making comes from our selfishness. Everything is for me in business, nothing for others. I said, there is selflessness in us, selflessness in us. Why can't we build a business on the basis of our selflessness? Where the business will be aiming at everything is for others, nothing for me. And I call it social business. And there will be two kinds of business in the world. This is a proposal I make to make broader, broaden this architecture of economic framework. Then the world will be a more balanced place. So I started creating those kind of businesses, social businesses. One of them became very known. Now later on, many others became known. 
the one that we did with Danone, Grameen Danone Company, producing yogurt. To address the malnourished children, the health of the malnourished children in Bangladesh. There are millions of them. Half the children of Bangladesh are malnourished. So we produced this yogurt and put all the micronutrients which are missing in the children into the yogurt. Vitamin, iron, zinc, iodine, which is a tremendous short in the children. A child eats two cups of yogurt each week. And over a period of eight to nine months, the child becomes a healthy child. She has regained or she has regained all the micronutrients. So that is the objective of the company. The owners of the company, Danone and Grameen, they have promised they will never take any dividend out of it. They can get back their investment money, but not a many more. And that's a social business. You can create social business. I can create social business, a lot of them. We created another company with water, Beolia company in uh, France, Grameen Beolia. Water is a big problem in all of our countries. In Bangladesh, arsenic is a big problem in our water. So we created a social business to bring clean water in the villages. We just uh, started a company called Grameen Adidas with Adidas. Would you believe that a poor people's <laughs> bank now talking about Adidas? We did it. We told them, look, you should start with a kind of mission statement. Nobody in the world should go without shoes. As a shoe company, this is our responsibility to make shoes affordable to everybody, even to the poorest person. If you accept that, then we can create social business. After long debates, discussion within the company, finally they adopted it. And they asked me how much the shoe should cost to make it affordable to the poorest people. I said, I don't know. I'm not a shoe businessman. It's good not to know. So I immediately said, OK, maybe under $1. Because I don't know the market situation. They said, well, that's a tall order. I said, you're at work. That's why you're Adidas. <laughs> so now they are working on it. They will be test marketing it this year in April. Close to $1, maybe not under, but close to it. And if everybody loves it, everybody wants it, then it will be produced in large number. So this is a social business because this will be done not to make money, but to have shoes for everybody in Bangladesh. It is important for health ground because many of our diseases like hookworms and other parasites come because your feet are bare. So we are creating a series of them. Many young people like you become very excited to join us in creating, designing, and we are giving competitions. De design a social business to address the problem that you hate, drug addiction. Design a social business, how to get addicted people out of addiction as a business. It's possible. Uh, how to get um, unemployed people out of unemployment as a social business. Name it, list it, design it, put it in the website, have a competition of your own. It'll be fun. You come up with beautiful ideas. And all we have to do now is implement it. I just announced recently, uh, in a couple, uh, about a week back, creation of a social business fund for Haiti because everybody is so eager to help Haiti, I thought this would be a good time to create a social business fund so that we can go and create a series of social businesses. There are young girls sitting around not doing anything, don't know what will happen to them. There are many young boys sitting around, don't know what happens. The whole island is barren, all the trees are gone, not because of the earthquake, even before that. So we said we'll have a series of these social businesses out of this social business fund We'll have afforestation as a social business. We'll create jobs. Not for making money. When you're not making money, job creation becomes such a simple thing. All you have to do, oh, maybe I'll start a pizzeria, which will employ five people, 10 people. 
end, the sales proceed will cover the cost of the entire operation, and I'm happy about it because I created it not for making money, but to provide jobs for these 10 people. And it's self-sustaining, so I don't have to worry about bringing money to sustain it. It's a beautiful pizzeria. Everybody loves it. So you got yourself a social business going. In how many different ways you can do that in job creation, you, it is an endless possibilities. If you take the profit idea from your mind, if you had the profit idea in your mind, you'll be like, uh, am I going to get 15% at least return on my investment? If not, mm -mm, I'm not going there. So that thought is not in your mind anymore. Even if it is zero invest return, if it's one percent return, you don't mind it because you're getting your money back. So you have a series of opportunities in microcredit, in uh, creating so social business and uh, uh, training, in providing transportation facilities, all kinds of things. So we'll be trying it out in Haiti, and we need your help. Anybody from Haiti or anybody is interested in joining us, please join us, give your ideas, we'll, we need your ideas. And we're also doing it in Albania. Anybody from Albania? Is there anybody from Albania? No. Haiti, you got. Haiti, we've got. Where are you, James? James? James that's me. Ah, here we are. Uh, okay, voila. we got him there. Okay. Voila, we'll be Elena. working there. Right. Haiti, Albania, we're directly involved. We're invited by Albania to do social business. We've been building up lots of ideas. And we need a lot of ideas. You see, the world is run by ideas, not by theories. Don't get upset by the theories. We made those theories. We can junk them anytime we want. Just say delete, goes, finish. You put your own theory into it. Don't get scared. We made the rules, we changed the rules. Don't be slave of the rules. If you become slave of the rules, we are finished. All our hopes are gone. We keep on inventing and reinventing ourselves. That's what the human beings are all about. So all the things, you say, no, 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 this is very sacred. You can't touch it. This is the way it is done. That's what the experts tell us. Don't get threatened by the experts. They don't know more than you know. They just show it up as if they know more than you do. But your gut feeling is much more important than what they say. If the expert banker told us, no, it cannot be done, they are always telling us it cannot be done. We said, forget it, we'll try it. Come on, don't scream at us. Still people scream at us, oh, this is not going to do, get it done. We do it. We even run programs in uh, New York City right now called Grameen America. Beautiful program, but no problem. While the big banks are collapsing, this microcredit is just flourishing right there. Repayment is near 100%. Same city. So people ask, aren't you impacted by the financial crisis? I say, where is the financial crisis? I didn't see it. That's another world completely. So the chance is, if you come up with one idea, like what we did in a tiny little village, one tiny idea. Now most of you are probably studying in your classroom. What is microfinance? How, what does it do? And social business, another idea. Just doing it because it works so well. It, you can address any problem. Now we are telling that government should do this, government should do this, yes. And one girl said, why? We should do it too. Of course. Citizens are smarter than the governments all the time. Always. It's not that government is a, is a collection of bad people. Government structure is such they cannot act quickly. They have to compromise many things. That's why it's very important that we individuals, as we are, act and change the world. Only if we act, we can create the world that we want. You have to make it very clear in your mind what kind of world you want. List them. These are the qualities, these are the features that we would like to have in our world. If you have made that list, 50% of the work is done. The rest of the 50%, now work for it. Just you. You don't need even a next friend. 
just yourself. If you work for it, you'll see how many people will come around you because they believe in it. You don't have to make big speeches about it. Just seeing what is being done, it will be done. And we can create the world we love. We can create a safe world. We can create a world where not a single human being will suffer from the misery of poverty. We can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Absolutely wonderful.